Imagine a bustling marketplace in ancient Jerusalem, merchants calling out, children laughing, the scent of freshly baked bread mingling with the aroma of incense. Amidst the noise and clamor, whispers of a man named Jesus fill the air. He's not just any man, some say he's the promised Messiah, the King of Kings, who performs miracles and speaks with authority like no other. But not everyone is convinced. In fact, there's a group of powerful men, religious leaders, who see him not as a king but as a threat. Their envy, fear, and pride blind them to the truth, and in their hearts, they plot to silence him forever. Jesus was no stranger to the crowds. Wherever he went, people gathered, drawn by his words of wisdom, his miracles, and the hope he offered. But as his popularity grew, so did the tension between him and the religious leaders of the day. These leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees, were experts in the law. They were the spiritual guides of the people, the ones who were supposed to lead others to God. Yet, when God himself walked among them, they didn't recognize him. One day, as Jesus taught in the temple courts, the religious leaders approached him, their hearts full of malice. They were determined to discredit him, to prove that he was nothing more than a blasphemer. By what authority are you doing these things, they demanded. And who gave you this authority? Jesus, knowing their hearts, responded not with anger but with a question of his own. I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I do these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven, or of human origin? The leaders were caught off guard. If they said, from heaven, Jesus would ask why they didn't believe John the Baptist, who had testified about him. But if they said, of human origin, they feared the people, who believed John was a prophet. Trapped by their own deceit, they answered, we don't know. Jesus replied, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But the leaders were not deterred. They continued to challenge Jesus, attempting to catch him in his words. They brought him a coin and asked, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? They thought they had him cornered, if he said yes, he would anger the people who despised Roman rule, if he said no, he would be accused of rebellion. But Jesus, with divine wisdom, asked them to show him the coin used for the tax. Whose image is this? He asked, Caesar's, they replied. Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's, Jesus said. His answer left them speechless, unable to find fault in his words. Yet, despite their failures, the religious leaders' hatred for Jesus only grew. They were jealous of his influence, fearful of losing their power, and too proud to accept that this humble carpenter from Nazareth could be the Messiah. They began to plot his death, convincing themselves that it was better for one man to die than for the whole nation to suffer under Roman oppression. As they conspired, Jesus continued to teach, heal, and show love to the people. But he knew what was coming. He knew that the very leaders who were supposed to shepherd his people would instead lead them astray. He knew they would turn the crowd against him, and that soon, the same people who shouted, Hosanna, would cry out, crucify him. In the end, the religious leaders' rejection of Jesus was a tragic fulfillment of prophecy. They had all the knowledge, all the signs, but their hearts were hard. They could not see that the kingdom of God was not about power and prestige, but about humility, love, and sacrifice. As Jesus stood before them, bound and beaten, he looked into the eyes of the very men who had rejected him. They thought they had won. But in truth, it was through their rejection that God's ultimate plan of salvation was unfolding. Jesus, the rejected king, would soon become the risen savior, conquering sin and death not through force, but through love. And in doing so, he offered a choice to all, accept or reject, believe or deny. The same choice remains for us today. These stories are to equip us in our journey of faith, this is for us to know to love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ.